how did you then transition to becoming the ED? Oh God, um, yes, there was a lot in between there. As I said, I have three phases of my leadership, leadership really. And you've told us I about think one. The first one is when I was a really good leader at the, at the beginning of my leadership and being a good person. Yeah. But then I think over time, the pressure gets to you. Mm -hmm. And um, as I talked about the fundraising, we fundraise like crazy. Mm. So, uh, and when we started, before we started recording, I said, there's a time I used to ask myself, like, is mm. this life? Mm. Mm where you work 14 hours 15 yeah. hours yeah. every single day all the time all the time mm. and then you go for i would go for vacation and i would go with my laptop mm. i would be responding to emails during vacation on mm. christmas day my birthday weekends mm. Mm. like life we worked and worked and worked and like we we're consumed mm. by the survival mm. of the organization mm. because we are an organization which doesn't have a godfather godmother somewhere so mm. every money that is in this institution we raise it ourselves we mm. don't have those mm. people that at the beginning of the year we are sure that they are going to give mm. start write a check that is going to run our operations mm. so every penny that is here we raise it mm. with partners of course mm. and with um you know very good supportive funders mm. so it's a very difficult mm funding model mm. to sustain mm. because as i've said every person who is here their time is paid for mm. and therefore everything that is not paid for they do it in their free time and fundraising is a big part of that mm. so the, really working 14 15 hours a day was normal monday to monday like saturday sunday you're busy responding to emails and reading documents and doing this and giving feedback and training people mentorship is extra it's mm. nobody pays you to mentor people mm. So it really took a toll on us as mm. people. Mm. And we are caught into this cycle of like an endless, um, maybe rat race is mm. a good way to describe it. Yeah. So that does something to you. Mm. And then as you get into leadership, you, you have a certain understanding of the institutional, the institutional challenges. Mm. But then when you come now to your team, you're also getting other pressures and you ask yourself, can't they see this? I can see it. Why can't they see it? Mm. I saw this when I was a postdoc. How come mm. these people can't see it? And yet they are, you mm. know, slightly more senior. Mm. And so you start getting these tensions and Frustration. dynamics and frustrations mm. where mm. as management, you feel like you're doing your best. Mm. You're almost dying. Mm. Going back to Sherry, mm. you're giving everything like, mm. okay, you've not mm. even asked like my husband left mm. and then what, mm. you know? Mm. So like very difficult family dynamics. Mm. And then you have to deal with mm. complaints mm. you do stuff satisfaction service and people are not happy and you're like oh my god mm. what do these people want from mm. me so over time you start like sort of closing yourself off mm. i think i reached a point of i need to protect myself mm. because i'll go crazy mm. so i put walls mm. around myself mm. to protect me from the craziness mm. and so those walls now of course they become apparent mm. to to people, people. Mm. So as I said, I have three phases and mm. I know them very mm. well mm. because um, the second phase, I was very patient. Mm. I was very like no nonsense. Mm. I don't have time for mm. nonsense. Like mm. honestly, I don't have time for this. Mm. So from this patient person who was mm. seeing the best in everyone, mm. I, I didn't have time mm. anymore <laughs> mm. because I was trying to survive as a person. Mm. I was trying to survive as a leader. I was trying to make the institution survive, mm. of course, with everyone else. Mm. But then, as I've said, it, it gets to you. Mm. And I can distinctly see that I mm. changed who I, I became a different person. Mm. So on the surface, you know, it was I was still very successful, mm. you know, bring all these innovations. Mm. I was growing in my leadership. I was getting promoted very fast. Mm. I was getting grants, you mm. know, things were happening. This, you know, was succeeding. Mm. But there were some undertones mm. of dissatisfaction, of discontent. Mm. We had, you know, um, we have a narrative around attrition, you know, mm. staff coming and leaving. Mm. And every staff satisfaction survey was like a punch in the gut. We are doing mm. our best. How can people not see that we're doing our best? Like, mm. what is this? Mm. And then, um, yeah, I think, as I said, really, I built walls around myself. Mm. So uh, much as the on the surface decision was growing and succeeding, mm. I think something was happening to the soul mm. of the organization Yeah, that was not... Um, that we quite couldn't put a finger on, mm. but we thought we could live with it. Mm. I think I think we thought we could live with it. Mm. So we sort of people would complain and would say that's nonsense. We've mm. had this, mm. you know, since forever. Mm. People complain and we're like, 
um, in the world, 60% of organizations are like that. So we're holding the 60%. Mm. And people will talk about something like, my goodness, we've talked about this already so many times. Like if you've not heard it, then I don't know what to do with you. Mm. Because I've talked, we've, we've, we've explained this. Mm. So, and, and of course, you know, I think we had stopped listening mm. to people. Mm. <clears throat> So that I know that phase of my leadership and that phase of the organization <laughs> and of other uh, and the organization. But as you're saying, mm. it rises and falls on yeah, the leader. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm. yeah. So I think we've been a successful organization all throughout. Mm. I don't think there's a time when we feel like we've mm. been mm. Um, not successful. But then maybe but it's been metrics. at a cost. Mm. Exactly. Maybe the metrics or how do we measure success? Mm. Because if you look at our trajectory, whether mm. it's in terms of staff growth, mm. it's upwards, mm. um, consistent mm. funding upwards, mm. consistent mm. papers mm. published upwards, mm. um, the expansion to different countries, mm. the, everything, every mm. metric you can look at, mm. there's not been a dip. Mm. Mm. in our trajectory mm. it's just these are the nuances of job exactly. satisfaction exactly. work satisfaction yeah. Yeah. culture mm. climate exactly and then mm. how you feel as a person because as i've said mm. there are times i could honestly ask myself i was like my goodness mm. maybe i should retire at 45 so <laughs> that i can get my life back mm. because i did not have a life outside mm. work mm. so and then being able to connect it back mm. to the institutional culture and mm. dynamics mm. I think that's now where my third phase, <laughs> my leadership comes in. <laughs> Before you move away from that, so how did that impact on you as an individual? And yeah. how did you deal with that? Uh, thank you also for being really honest, you know, with that reflection. But how did you, how do you manage that as, as, as Catherine? Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, I think, I don't know, like, as it's, it's only when you start looking back and you say, my goodness. Um, we connect yeah. in reverse. We, we so, connect in reverse, yeah. yeah. Mm. It's like, what was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> so I can give some examples about work-life balance. Mm. Um, so my husband left after three years. Yeah. And he got a job in the US. Okay. So he migrated to the US. Oh my goodness. And so, I mean, Nairobi, he's in the US. And so, okay, uh, how is this going to work? So it wasn't easy at all because we would meet during summer and mm. during Christmas. So in a year, like, I don't know. Twice. Like one and a half months or two yeah, two months in a mm. year. Mm. That's the time would be like uh, physically together. Mm. And then uh, soon after he left, I had my I had our firstborn. Mm. So my daughter would see his her father during summer and then during Christmas. Mm. And then now uh, here I was with her, and I'm coming back from work. As soon as I get home, I'm thinking about the 200 emails which I have not yet responded. So I open my laptop, and she's there climbing me. Doha, please just just go away i have look well, i know so like um until she was about three or four that's when i said like oh my god what am i doing what am i her? doing what am mm. i doing to her mm. but it really took it took time for me to get it and say okay yes there are these 200 emails so rather than getting home at seven o'clock and pick my laptop i should first like stay with her for two hours until she goes to bed at nine i can have dinner then i can pick up my laptop and then go until one o'clock but which is also not exactly which yeah. is also not um mm. normal mm. but that's what it took mm. that's what it took that's to, the demand it, it, it exactly requires, yeah uh, for me to respond to all the emails i needed to respond to and read all the documents i needed to read mm. and review everything people expected me to do mm. and like work on my own projects and all this stuff mm. that's what was needed and so that's one thing about my daughter. But it's the same. As I said, I'll go and leave summer. Now we've gone to the US. Mm. <laughs> July, and then I, I go with yeah. my I go with, I go with my laptop and mm. every single day I'll be checking emails. Different time zone, but like this email is so important. Chapa chapa I'm ready, I'm ready responding now, directing now you this one, take care of this or this, or like spend time. This one I have to review it because it's very important. There's a deadline. I cannot disappoint somebody uh, by not reviewing this. And I think the worst thing of it was that if I didn't do that, I was more stressed. If I didn't work, it, it on you. if I, I was more stressed, I could go in bed and I, and I couldn't sleep because I know there are 50 unanswered emails and I'm on vacation and I couldn't sleep because I've not responded to those emails. And I was like, what is this? So my husband was like, why are you doing with your laptop? Why, didn't, why, why are you working? And I said, it's more stressful if I don't. I'd rather answer the emails, then I can have some peace. Because if I don't, I'm not going to sleep properly. I, I said, this is not normal. Like, how, how can you live like this? It took me two years to take that out of my system. Two years of like a war with myself yeah. <laughs> to reach 
a point of knowing I have 50 emails which are not read and I can go to bed and sleep soundly. Mm. It took me two years. Yeah. And I never want to go back. I, I, never. Yeah, I, I never want to go back there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't, I don't, I, it's hard to explain that I had to fight with myself for almost mm. two years mm. to get to the point of being okay mm. with going for vacation and switching off my laptop and not opening it or opening it and saying, mm -hmm, smile. Yeah. It, Important this, email, this, but this will, it will be taken care to of. To be taken care of or it, not. Yeah. Like if it's not taken care of, then what? The yeah. sun will rise and shine and, yeah. and set. Like, so like really, figuring out what is really important yeah and that yeah. um we don't in my language they say that work never gets finished yeah in, in Rinyango, they say, work. yeah like, and the, i like to like, say <laughs> work rises to the amount of volume that we to the volume of time that we actually yeah give it you finish yeah so if you give emails, it 24 be another hours there will be 24, be 24 hours, hours of work, work. If we, yeah. so <laughs> that was a, a hard lesson to learn and uh, but it takes in a way it's a risk yeah, it to, is. in the kind of environment in which you operate. Yeah. And um, I think that's another thing. Um, I take risks mm. saying, okay, let's do this and see what happens. Mm. Let's see whether the sun will not rise and the sun rose. Mm. Let's see whether our funding will dip and it did not dip. It didn't. Let's see whether our band rate is going to reduce and it did not reduce. And we just said, no, we are stopping this whole thing. Mm. We're not going to be working this way. Mm. It's not So it's it, not good for this us. This reflection, it helped you. Um, <clears throat> so it also helped you deal with your that second phase of your leadership yeah um and and you are you're about to say something about uh it moving to your third phase right yes okay <laughs> we, we'll get to that in just a minute let's change battery